Hi divers, Ali Pierce from Ali Pierce Scuba and I'm uh, back here at uh, the Service Center at Scuba 2000 and I want to share with you uh, a, a tech tip. Now this tech tip is really related to, uh, to uh, something in your dive performance as opposed to a piece of equipment, what I usually do, uh, but it's a very, very important tech tip. As a matter of fact, this tech tip applies to every scuba diver. Every single scuba diver has a set of ears, usually two, and uh, they invariably cause problems. I know they do. I've been diving a very, very long time. I've seen millions of divers, certainly hundreds of thousands anyway, and they all have ear problems at some time or another. Uh, it may not seem it to some of you new divers and you, you watch your more experienced buddies or the dive instructor and he goes up and down, doesn't seem to have any problems. What he has had, it's just that perhaps his ears have become very conditioned and maybe he's learned some easy techniques for quickly and easily equalizing. I'm not really here to talk about equalizing your ears. That's something that you need to learn from your instructor and try different methods, maybe for your dive buddy and take your time, be very patient and find out what works for you. Everybody's different. Most divers use the swallowing or the Valsalva method, holding their nose and blowing. Uh, and it works for most divers, moving your jaw a little bit, looking up helps. Uh, I'm weird uh, in, in many ways, and including my ears. Uh, I have to swallow in order to clear my left ear. It's the only way it'll clear. And the right ear, I have to hold my nose and blow in and out. And I'm back and forth like this. It'll clear. But they're different, you see, and, um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, however, I dive a great deal, and and, uh, and I've made it become almost automatic, so I can swallow, so it almost doesn't show. I will work like that on my equalizers, I'm going down. Uh, but let me talk today about uh, some issues with your ears that you, that you may not be completely familiar with. First of all, years and years ago, uh, we used to have problems with the ears as well. Ears haven't changed much over the years. And and uh, we couldn't go to the local drugstore and pick up something for diver's ear, as it's commonly called. The proper term actually is swimmer's ear. I think technically it's called externus otitis or something like that. I'm not a doctor. We call it swimmer's ear or diver's ear. And really what that is, is a problem that's occurred after the dive. What's happened usually is you've got some water inside your ear and you didn't get all that water out and the water sits in there. And particularly if it's not good water, if it's a bit dirty from, from you know, dirty water, uh, and, uh, then it'll begin to fester a little bit in there, turn into a bit of a swamp. <laughs> and the little bugs in the swamp can actually cause an infection. That can actually be very serious. If you ever do, let me point this out right now, if you ever do injure your ears, whether it's from not equalizing, you hurt your ear, or you get water in, and after a day after the dive, or for a couple of days, your ears are bugging you, don't wait too long to go and see a doctor. I usually tell divers, three days. If your ear is not cleared up completely, back to normal, within three days, go and see your doctor right away. Puncturing your eardrum, actually puncturing, bursting your eardrum, hurting your ears, or getting water in there in a minor infection, none of those are terribly serious. But if they're not treated, and you get a bad infection, it can be very serious. It can cause loss of hearing. So use that as a sort of a, a rule of thumb. I don't like rules of thumb. Three days. If your ear has been injured in any way and it's not cleared up completely in three days, get to a doctor quick as possible. All right, let's talk about some treatments. Again, years ago, I seem to do that a lot now as I get older. It seems to me I'm always looking back. But years and years ago, when we got uh, swimmer's ear, diver's ear, we had a little solution we made up. We got a bit of alcohol, a little bit of glycerin, and I think we used to use, uh, um, uh, I think it was magnesium, a white powder. And I have to think for a minute now. There were three things we mixed together, but mainly alcohol and glycerin. And uh, we would make this little mixture up and kept it in our dive bag. And we'd put a drop in after the dive. You see, we were plugged up, put a drop in. Some divers would put a drop in before the dive. Don't know if it's necessary, but not necessarily dumb. When I explain why we made up that mixture, we put a drop in before or after the dive. And it would help to clear our ears out. The why? Why those particular things? Well, first of all, the alcohol dries out the ear. The alcohol actually absorbs, mixes with the water, absorbs it, and draws it out. So you put a bit of alcohol in there, uh, then it, it, will, it will tend to draw the moisture out. Also, alcohol is an antiseptic. So alcohol will actually kill germs as well. So that, that does two purposes. Alcohol dries the ear and kills germs. The glycerin, which is a kind of a, an oil, okay, 
uh, coat C ear canal. So maybe that's a good reason to put that drop in before the dive. If you have a chronic problem with water getting trapped in your ears, then maybe that, a, a drop of glycerin in there ahead of time, it lubricates the ear. Put it in, put your head down, put it in, and work your ear around a little bit like that. So it goes right down, right down the canal, hopefully right to the eardrum, and coats the whole canal and the eardrum with that thin, thin layer of glycerin. Glycerin is like oil, so water will run in and run right back out. So you won't get that water trapped in there. So maybe it's a good idea before. We used to do use it after. Now, interesting enough, you can still buy. You can buy today. Go to any drugstore and ask the pharmacist for something for swimmer's ear. You would usually have it in the first aid counter. So this this is ear drops for all water sports, water clogged ears for drying water clogged ears. And and it comes in a little little nice little tube. You'd break the seal on it and put in ear drops for all water sports after swimming, diving surfing, uh, and, and then just instructions on here, put one to two drops in the ear canal and work it in gently. And the ingredients, isopropyl alcohol and glycerin. I guess we were pretty smart back then, weren't we? Look at that. Anyway, that's what it is. It's alcohol and a bit of glycerin. So this might be, if you have a chronic problem, this might be a solution. Pardon the pun, a solution. Anyway, one drop beforehand, maybe if it's a chronic problem, and certainly a couple drops after if you seem to be having, if you got water trapped in there. But don't forget my three day rule. There was another interesting product, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this particular tech tip that you may or may not have heard of. There's a product called Dox Pro Plugs. It's exactly what it's called. It's called Dox, D O C apostrophe S, like short form for doctors, Pro Plugs. Docs Pro Plux. Now, <clears throat> before going any farther, let me tell you that there is actually a doc. I've met him. Wonderful old man. He's very elderly now, and uh, I haven't seen him for a couple of years. Uh, and, and he started this company many, many years ago. He was a doctor, and uh, hence the name Docs. And many, many years ago, as part of a program to help people, people for a variety of reasons to protect their ears, principally from water, he developed Pro plugs, hence Doc's Pro plugs. And they're really very simple. They're earplugs. That's really what they are. They're earplugs. Uh, but they're special earplugs. They're special earplugs because they have a, a many sizes, because the, the ear opening and the canal is different for everybody, from tiny, tiny ear canals to extra large, like Kevin's extra large ears. He's a bit like this. So <laughs> Doc has about seven or eight different sizes. So the size is exactly right. Because these are going to go into the ear canal and they're going to stay there. They get kind of locked in there if it's the right size and protect your ear from water going in and out. Now he developed Doc developed these partly for swimmers, and the ones for swimmers who stay near the surface are solid plugs, not unlike the cheap plugs you'd buy at a drugstore. So no uh, no water goes in or out, and no pressure goes in and out. Now you probably know if you don't know, let me remind you from your from your uh, diving course that you can't wear an ear plug. That completely plugs the ear canal if you're a scuba diver. Because when you're a scuba diver, as you descend, the water pressure increases and you equalize it on the inside by putting air up against the inside of the ear to equalize the pressure from the outside. Now, if you have an ear plug, a plug in there, first of all, the water pressure will tend to push that plug into your ear canal. Not good. And secondly, if it doesn't do that, the air in the tiny gap between the plug and the eardrum doesn't increase. So now when you equalize, you put a lot of pressure on the inside, there's none on the outside. Did you know that your ears can actually burst outwards? The point to all of that is you cannot wear a solid plug, ear plug, if you're a scuba diver, if you go deeper than four or five feet. So the doc, the doc, <laughs> actually came along and developed another pro plug, vented. So there's none vented for swimmers and there's vented for divers. That's right. So this uh, earplug that I have with me, which we sell here in the dive store, and any decent pro shop would have it, or you can look it up online, Docs Pro Plugs. Uh, uh, these are for scuba divers. Yeah, earplugs for scuba divers, kind of neat, but they have a hole in them. Now you're going to say, well, what good is a hole? They've got a hole in it. What well, it's a very small hole. So small, in fact, that water will not easily go through. Oh, I'm sure that a couple of molecules, a tiny bit of water might seep through as you descend a little bit, but generally speaking, water will not go through the hole in the Dox Pro Plug. But pressure will. So the pressure increases and the ear can feel that pressure and so you can equalize safely on the inside so the eardrum stays balanced as you descend as you're equalizing. Pressure on the outside, equalizing on the inside, your eardrum stays straight and safe. So it's a vented plug. So it's pretty neat. Now, what you can do with these, 
go to your local dive store, and it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat process. So the first thing that the dive store will do is it will take this neat little device from Dock, and they will actually hold this up against you. And there's all the different sizes. There's all the different. There's eight different sizes, and they're going to take this device. They're going to hold it up. This is for the uh, for the left ear. They're going to hold it up to your ear, and they're going to hold it right tight where it belongs. And you, these are all the different shapes of. I'm going to put this paper back on so you can see it. These are the actual shape. This is the shape of your ear. If you've never noticed, this is the shape of the ear. If you look into the hole, and so they hold this up against your ear, and they say, "Okay, you look like a large." Let me see. Yeah, you're not a medium. Not, yeah, you're a large size, large. So if they find that you're okay, size large, and what they'll do then, then they'll go to the fitting plugs and they'll pick out size large. You see here, size large. There it is. And this is pink. It's pink for a reason. We'll come back in a minute. And he'll take actually take this plug and he'll try it in your ear. He'll fit it in there to make sure that it goes in and stays there. If you you can't really see it very well, but the part that goes into the ear canal is a little bit opens up a little bit, so it sort of goes in and clips into your ear, maybe a little bit, clips in a little bit, and it stays in the ear. So the dive store personnel, they'll actually take this little Docs Pro plug and they'll actually put it in your ear. This is the right size, and it will go in and it's very, very comfortable, and it sits in there and stays there. You really don't even notice it after a short while. And so once they've determined the right size, yep, you're large, you're definitely large. Uh, they clean these, I put the alcohol out just to demonstrate these are cleaned each time, they should be for sure, make sure they are. Then they're going to say, okay, you need a large. Now, what do you want, sir? Do you want these with a leash or without a leash? And you have to make another decision. Boy, this is tough, huh? Anyway, you can get Docs Pro plugs. Here they are. They look just like this. <clears throat> Let me get this open here. I'm sure I can. I'm pretty handy that way. And so here is your Docs Pro plug. There it is. That's what it looks like. Now you notice that the actual Docs Pro plug, exactly the same as the fitting plug, is clear. Yeah. So that's why the fitting plugs are pink. So don't get mixed up. They're for fitting only. This is the actual plug. It's almost exactly the same. It has a tiny handle on the outside, a little knob for hanging on to, and you simply take it and you put it against your ear, against the canal, and you very gently but firmly push it in, and it stays there. It's that easy. And this is vented. Now, there's a tiny, tiny hole in it. So water won't go into your ear canal, but you can equalize. You might decide that you want the uh, Docs Pro plug with a leash on them. These are small. They are clear. So certainly it's conceivable that they could get lost very easily if they're not in there firmly or if you forget about them. So you can actually get Doc's Pro Plugs with a leash. This leash fastens together, so you have a long leash. Are you old enough to remember mittens with a string on them? Yeah, ran through your sleeves? Maybe not. Uh, maybe I'm showing my age. But you can get Doc's Pro Plugs with a leash. So this leash goes around the back of your neck and it keeps the Pro Plugs so you don't, you're not as likely to lose them, but they actually stay in really well. So there you go. So the Docs Pro Plugs, and it comes with instructions, and they're not, they're not expensive. They're probably 15 bucks, maybe, for a set of Docs Pro Plugs. It's not expensive, and it just might help you. It keeps water out of your ears. You can still equalize. Very, very comfortable and inexpensive. Sounds like a good solution. So if there's some of you out there that are having chronic problems with your ears, even as you dive and you're equalizing carefully, but it still seems to be a problem. Maybe your canal is such that water goes in easily and you're having a problem with it, then check on that. Docs Pro Plux. And for the rest of you, ah, a little bit of that solution. A little bit of alcohol and glycerin might not be a bad idea for those occasions when you're on a dive trip and you can't get water out. You want to hurt, or ruin the dive trip. A couple of drops can't hurt. Anyway, there's some ideas for you about how to fix your ears. Usually I'm showing you how to fix a tank or a regulator or a BC. Well, there's how to fix your ears if you're a scuba diver. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce from Tech Tips.